Hello everyone, welcome to Scorcher Toys at AnyMoon.com's review of Takara Tomy and Hasbro's second effort at Masterpiece Optimus Prime. And there have been six releases of the second version of Convoy slash Optimus Prime since Takara rolled him off the molds for the first time in September 2011. Original MSRP was 22,000 yen and that was for the gift set that included the trailer. Hasbro followed in November of the next year with the Toys R Us exclusive masterpiece release for an MSRP of 119.99 US dollars. The next release we got was Sans Trailer, that was Takara's MP10B Black Convoy, released in March 2013. Since it wasn't a gift set, it was a cheaper toy. It came in at a 12,800 yen MSRP. Uh, then we got a reissue of the Takara for Asia, same 2200 yen price that was in September 2013. Uh, the next release we saw was Hasbro's Year of the Horse gift set. Uh, Toys R Us exclusive again. Uh, it wasn't quite a gift set in the same uh, capacity as the original Takara release. There's some pieces missing. I'll get into that in a moment. Uh, that was also $119.99 but was easily found on sale. Uh, then there was the uh, reissue of the Hasbro masterpiece for Asia. Uh, that was $159.99 generally, but included a new Vector Sigma toy. Next we got Takara Exclusives. There was the MP10A Bathing Ape release in November 2014. That was a Sans trailer release also. This time the MSRP was 18,144 yen as I found it. That included tax. Uh, again, Japanese only release. Then we got the Evangelion, wow, did I just say that? The EVA release in November 28th, 2014. That was 25,000 yen, including tax. Uh, again, a, ja a Japan exclusive. Finally, we are getting uh, very soon a Takara reissue for the Japanese market. That's sh supposed to drop in May of 2015. We're going to begin our discussion today by taking a look at the two toys that don't come with trailers. That's MP10B and MP10A. MP10A is a repaint, repaint of MP10B. What makes him a repaint of this particular toy instead of one of the other Masterpiece toys? He doesn't have a Autobot logo molded into the shoulder. Obviously 10B was a Decepticon and 10A is a Bathing Ape toy. So instead of there being a embossed Autobot logo, it's just flat. On the knockoff toys, they are knockoffs of the original masterpiece, Optimus Prime. So they do have the Autobot logo there. So it is very easy to tell a original Bathing Ape toy from a knockoff. So all of these toys, with trailer or without, come with an Energon Axe as seen here. The axe has a little groove in it, fits right over the thumb, and then he is deadly energy on axe wielding MP10B. Uh, there are differences in the axes. I will get into that more in a bit. You also get a matrix of leadership. There are also differences in the matrix of leadership. You also always get a gun. This is the 10B gun. There are also differences in the guns. Here's an image that shows the differences in the guns and the matrix of leaderships. You can see it's very minor differences, just kind of in the plating on the matrix of leadership and the button versus Takara on Hasbro or the handle on the bathing ape or overall color of the EVA and uh, Year of the Horse releases. So. Before we move on to that Year of the Horse release, here is just a quick look at both of these toys. The MB10B has red uh, windshields. It also has red eyes. Now, part of the complaint you'll often hear about Takara releases is that they did light piping with the eyes. On the 10B, I really think it works. On the normal Masterpiece toy, maybe not as much. There he is from the back. 
little shiny. <clears throat> kind of has like a paint effect to him overall. He looks very, very sharp. Very happy to own him. Next, we have the Bathing Ape release, which has entered the stratosphere price-wise. If you're looking for him on the secondary market, got a little camo striping. We will see that again when we get this guy transformed. But basically a green on green with camo accents, as you would probably expect from Bathing Ape. That brings us to Year of the Horse Optimus Prime, and he is a breed of a different flavor. He's got a red paint that I love, blue paint that I love, and gold accents that I abhor. Uh, the gold accents are made even worse in that there are big sprue marks in them. Uh, so that is far from ideal. Oops, there you go. So, uh, not a big fan of the gold. I hear you can replace the gold fairly easily. I'm not sure I believe that. And I'm not a toy customizer, so not really up my alley. Uh, continuing the color palette that is a little bit questionable, you get a brown gun. That's as opposed to the normal black and silver gun. You get kind of a copper and gold gun. Uh, all guns feature kind of a neat gimmick that lets you collapse them. So you bring this back. Uh, you bring this in. There's a little clip on the back of the handle. So you kind of bring that in first, the bottom edge first. It should kind of click into place. Everything worked. And then it holds together like this. And then you turn the toy around, open the backpack, put it in fat side to the back, push down. The gun is going to pop out the back here. And then you just bring it up like that. And there you go. Now the toy is stowing the gun. And that is obviously a pretty neat gimmick. And it's all spring loaded. So you can bring the gun back out, push this little button in the back, and it springs right out. So that was pretty neat. Let's take a look at your more standard Optimus Prime toys. All right, these are the three toys that come with all of the accessories. They include the trailer, roller, and spike, which are missing from uh, the other releases. The Year of the Horse obviously has the trailer, but it doesn't have roller or spike. So these guys are the whole package. Uh, but before we get into that, the trailers any further, let's uh, go ahead and take a look at articulation, which is obviously a pretty big deal when you're buying high-end toys. So Optimus Prime has a head. He can spin the head around, and he can look up, and he can look down, and his little ears can move. So that's all pretty standard. It's not a ball joint head, so you can't cock it to one side or the other, so a little bit of a bummer in that respect. You can pull the arms away from the body, and then they can pivot upwards, so you can get these nice angles, which is very well done. Obviously, you can also rotate the arm around at the shoulder, so that's as expected. There's an elbow joint and a swivel in the bicep. Now, the elbow joint, you can see, goes 90 degrees, which... For a toy, there's a masterpiece toy, is pretty limited. Uh, also, when you start handling this toy, it is not unusual to cock the back, which then opens up the front. So, uh, something that's uh, not exactly ideal. The hands can rotate, and they have opening fingers. These three fingers are stuck together. You have a separate pointer finger which has articulation in two spots, so it can actually point. The thumb is not articulated at all, uh, and there's no wrist. So that's all pretty limited. Also, the pointer finger can pop off pretty easily, so that's a little bit of a bummer. Uh, we mentioned the gun earlier. There's a slot in the hand to hold the gun, which holds it more securely, which is always nice to see. There is a swivel in the waist, also always nice to see. Uh, going to the hips, you can flay them way out, and you can bring them in just a tiny bit. You can bring them forward, but you can only get that high. So that is going to affect your crouching poses. You can bring them back, 
And you can get that far back, which again, is gonna affect crouching poses. Not the best articulation at the hips. You have a swivel at the knee, which is always nice to see. You have a knee joint, which lets you get 90 degrees. Also lets you come forward almost 90 degrees. Uh, but again, you would like it to have a double joint that lets you get further, especially if you're gonna try to do crouching poses. So, um, kind of standard articulation here, nothing super masterpiece about it, although the feet do do quite a bit for you. So you got some up and down, you got a little separate toe, and you have camber in and out, mostly in I guess, camber in, which if you're doing aggressive stances, sure comes in handy. Now I believe the outside of this, maybe the back, are metal, but that is the only metal in the toy. Everything else is plastic, a little metal in the feet goes a long way to keeping it stable, so that's good to see. So now while I've got them both next to each other, you can see the Hasbro toy is the one I'm handling. It's got lighter blue, a tiny bit lighter red, and also it has blue eyes. They're dreamy, you can get lost in them. The Takara version had light piping, so it has blue plastic eyes that are not painted, uh, but consequently there is no light that gets in there, and so it just looks dark and kind of foreboding. Some people say he has dead eyes. I find that rude, but some people do prefer the Hasbro version for that reason. You can also see, I didn't mention earlier, yellow plastic inserts in the waist. That's good to see. And just overall, very nice detail. Little mold accents that aren't really necessary, but are there. And do make for one very good looking Optimus Prime. All right, let's take a closer look at the Everlasting Gobstopper. Uh, the color scheme obviously is not going to appeal to everyone. It is very unique. Uh, and different and not canon, uh, but it's fun. Uh, I like colorful toys, so uh, I've got no real problem with it. I do like that instead of being painted uh, detail here, it's the clear plastic orange, the same as the windows and the crotch, uh, so that's cool. I've got the gun in the hand and it stays there very well, so that's good to see. Uh, all of these toys as I mentioned earlier, come with a matrix of leadership. Those matrixes fit inside bot mode chest, as one would expect. So there's a little tab inside the door. You just lift up and pull away. Oops, so I got a window popping up in there. Uh, then there's a metal grate and another matrix cover inside. Lift those up and you reveal the matrix hole. Take your matrix. There's a little tab on either side that fits in between the edges of your matrix. And just plug it in. And you can close everything back up. It's nice and tidy. Uh, once you're ready to remove your matrix, the easiest way to do that is to just push on one of the sides and it'll pop right back out. Now I did mention earlier that there's some, this is a metal matrix, there's plating on the metal, and it does look like it chips off fairly easily, so that is a durability concern for you. Before we take a deeper dive into MP1 versus MP10, uh, here's a quick size comparison for you. Uh, the original MP1 is about 30 centimeters tall, a little bit more than 30 centimeters tall and MP10 comes in at right around 24 centimeters tall. If you're not good with centimeters, Google will do the math for you. Uh, you can see the Hasbro version of MP10's colors versus the original MP1. This is the uh, DVD release. Uh, you also have the short stacks versus the long stacks. Um, and you have kind of a pinkish red versus a much better red on MP10. So there's just a quick glimpse there. Also, you have a Decepticon logo now on MP10B versus the Autobot logo from MP1B, which 
uh, kind of seem like they mailed that in a little bit. Um, and otherwise, you have the plastic inserts on MP10 that were painted on on MP1. Uh, but you do have a lot of other details, so let's take a little bit closer look. So MP1 uh, debuted for the 20th anniversary. MP10 is more of a 30th anniversary toy, so there's been a, a lot of time between the two releases. MP1 is made almost entirely of metal. That's a bit of an overstatement, but it is heavy. It comes in at about two and a half pounds. In comparison, MP10 weighs under one pound. He's right around 14 ounces. So this toy has a ton of heft, <clears throat> primarily in the legs. Uh, that works for and against you. Uh, you might have some stability problems. Uh, the toy also has some features uh, that are a little higher end than you find on MP10. While MP10 has that cool gun gimmick I showed you, MP1 had things like uh, that same matrix gimmick. Uh, but also a button that lights it up. So that's uh, a little fancier. Uh, then you also had on the arms, a little communication bays. There's a bumblebee. This is an MP1 Takara release. So this was bumblebee and Starscream from the look of it. Uh, other releases had Grimlock, Rodimus, Optimus, Megatron, depending on which release we're all looking at. So those communicators are neat and they're a gimmick you don't find on MP10. You also had things like these little skirts come up and give you a little bit more articulation. But again, the legs are so heavy uh, and everything's so chunky. It doesn't really net you much of a gain. Since it's bigger, you have individually articulated fingers instead of the three fingers that are all stuck together. Again, it doesn't really net you much of a gain. Uh, you don't have the gun gimmick. You do have these pistons everywhere, which are pr you know, pretty neat, if not something you would see from the cartoon. Uh, you also get fins that pop up if you push the feet in. Uh, I'm not really sure how much that's worth to you. So there are some higher end gimmicks on MP1 that you don't get with MP10, but the overall refinements of MP10 will make it so you don't miss those so much. Also, the lack of die cast on MP10 means you won't be so worried about chipping your toy. Does he have a functioning mouth plate? No but I do have a neck. Here's one last scale comparison. This is my childhood G1 Ultra Magnus. Uh, you can see how he scales against MP10. Quite a bit smaller. I mentioned that there have been two Asia re-releases. Each one came with a free giveaway. There's this display stand, uh, and the second giveaway with the Hasbro release was Vector Sigma, which is basically a hollow yellow golf ball looking thing with a gold key that comes with it. This is from the episode where uh, the Autobots created the Aerial Bots. So there you go. That's basically all you can do is put the key in the ball. There's a little cardboard disc this comes with as a little display stand so it doesn't roll away on you. Speaking of display stands, you also got this black display stand if you bought the Takara Tomy re-release. Um, it is kind of god-awful. I can't really figure out even how I would want to use it. It doesn't seem like it's meant for this toy, other than the fact it says Transformers on the bottom. It doesn't seem particularly strong enough to lift the toy. Uh, I could sit here and massage these little prongs and get him into a position where he would be elevated, uh, but it is not worth it and it's not stable. So this would actually work a lot better with some of the follow-up masterpiece toys. So it's not a completely useless extra. It just doesn't work particularly well with Optimus. The Year of the Horse toy again does not come with spike or roller, but it does come with this funky clear trailer. Uh, the funky tr clear trailer has the uh, Year of the Horse Autobot emblem on the back. Uh, every trailer has these legs that come out. There's a little lip in the front that's easy to pull down and then the trailer will 
stand like that, which is a nice little touch. You can always open these rear doors. You just pull up a little bit and then put a finger underneath and swing the doors open. And then there is a little ramp that slides down, which you could then take one of your other masterpiece toys, put it in the car, in the trailer, and then close everything back up. And the benefit of the Year of the Horse trailer is you can still see which masterpiece toy is in there. That wouldn't be the case with any of the other trailers. Now, uh, another benefit of the trailer is that you can open it up and make it into a repair bay. Um, let's bring this up a little bit here. So you would bring up this thing here, swing the arm down, and then bring in your Optimus Prime toy, put him in, it's supposed to be up a little high, there we go, bring him in, he doesn't really lock into place or anything like that, he, it's just for display purposes, uh, but one nice little touch is that you can store his axe, and his gun, probably do it better than I am, uh, inside the bay. Uh, you could also just leave them in there and convert the whole thing and transform it, and then you would know where those accessories are at all times. Sorry, I forgot to put that guy up there. All right, from repair bay mode, it is pretty easy to switch to the combat deck. Uh, before I do, this little arm does open and close. I don't think I mentioned that earlier. So let's take Optimus out. And let's switch them up. Before I do, now that I'm not using a transparent trailer, you can see kind of the detail inside. This stuff almost looks like it's out of Aliens, but that's probably a, something else entirely. All right, to transform to the combat deck, we're just going to bring the trailer down and open the trailer doors. We could fine tune them a little bit later. Uh, there are stabilizers underneath. I already had them out, but you can just bring them open like this. And you can see it'll stabilize against the... Uh, the deck itself and these feet extend automatically which is a nice little touch on mp4 you used to have to push those down uh, obviously that's not that big of a deal so now we bring up the guns bring these down let's tuck the arm away here bring up our little so uh, the trailer Optimus Prime versions come with a spike figure, uh, unless it's the EVA release, which has a little unknown guy with it and that I will show you in a moment. You could tell the Takara Tomy spike figure from the Hasbro spike figure, and that Hasbro uses glossy paint and Takara Tomy uses matte paint, otherwise they are exactly the same and they would be very hard to judge uh, which one is which. Spike can fit in various places inside the combat deck because there are little fold-out chairs. So there's one down there, there's another one up here, and you just slide his feet in, and he is ready to type on that 1980s computer. So him and his Apple One get into business. Here he is over here, and you can of course open up this little thing and fit him in there. So. A little added play value with Spike and the combat deck. All right, let's talk trailer variants for a moment. Hasbro, Takara Tomy, and then this is the EVA release. Uh, you can see Takara Tomy gives it silver paint on the sides, not in the center. Uh, that silver paint extends all the way into the chairs, which is a nice touch there and a little around. Uh, you can see it looks pretty plain as just blue on the Hasbro release. Those are just black on the EVA release, but you do get kind of the gray versus the green offset and the green on the bottom as well. Uh, and the black accents, uh, it kind of pops. I really like how that looks. Uh, this looks a little disjointed to me. Uh, it seems like it should have been silver on the inside too. You also have more of a purple blue versus a true blue 
here. Uh, you have a smoked tinted uh, canopy here, almost clear canopy here, just a little bit of tint to it, and then the orange canopy there. Uh, there's a little black accent on the back of all of these. Not much of a difference there. Uh, the silver pops a little bit more on that little radar array there. So these are the different colors available for trailers uh, and the differences that you should know. Okay, from the outside now, again, we have the three not Year of the Horse trailers. Uh, one way you can differentiate the Takara Tomy first release from subsequent releases is that it did not have the little thumbnail piece that makes pulling these legs out easier. Here is the Hasbro release. It has that little thumbnail guard that you can pinch, pull your finger, pull it out with your finger. Uh, the Evangelion version also has that little thumbnail piece that lets you pull it forward. So only the very first Takara Tomy release did not have that. Here's just a quick look of the full trailer. Uh, nice detail. There's a wheel on the bottom. Uh, I like the uh, yellow paint on the sides there for that particular unit. Also seems to have just a little bit more detail all around. Here is otherwise the normal trailer. It has <coughs> a neat little gimmick in that you can open it up Press down these little trap doors. Pull up the little blaster toy. And then close it all back up. And now you can have this thing out in trailer mode. And just very quickly now, here is the original MP4 trailer. Here's the MP10 trailer. You can see there's not quite the size disparity you might have otherwise expected. Uh, you can also see uh, the details look a little bit better on the MP10. You've got the guard here. Uh, you have kind of a big chunky leg showing there. There's only one stabilizer beam in the front. They have a zigzag and a permanent cutout for bringing up that weapon through the top. There's a little bit of detail on the back doors as well. Uh, same gimmicks uh, with the opening doors, except instead of the trailer sliding internally, it just folds out like so. You can see there's the plastic pouch inside. So, uh, that compared to this, uh, basically the MP10 trailer is superior in pretty much every single respect. The gift sets also come with Roller. Uh, again, not the Year of the Horse gift set, but all the other ones. This is the Eva, Hasbro, and Takara releases. So there's a difference between each one. Uh, you can also see here is the Eva um, pilot figure guy, whatever he is, whoever he is. Uh, there are wheels on the roller, but they are not rubber like they are on the trailer or Optimus himself. There are a couple little gimmicks here. You can slide back this back panel, open that up. Kind of pops off fairly easily. Close it back up, and then you can install Optimus's gun. So that is a much more intimidating looking roller if you wanted. You could also... Pull the gun out, swing the door all the way open, and then rotate this over, and then close it back up. And you now have an attachment point for the trailer. So we can uh, just bring this up like that, and just kind of slides in on either side. And now roller is towing the trailer. So, uh, a couple little options for you. Roller can add a bit to the fun factor. Um, is nice to have. Obviously, he fits in the trailer. Uh, there's nothing in the trailer to hold either an MP car or roller in place. So once he's in there, he will rattle around. Uh, if you were playing with him, obviously that's not much of an issue for displayers. 
When you are done transforming the toy, it should look like this. I'm not gonna go through transformation in this video because I have a separate video where I do that and it takes a little bit of time and this is already a very long review. Uh, but some pointers. I am not thrilled with the way the legs and the feet come together. They don't peg in tight enough for my liking. They don't really feel like you've, you've gotten them all the way there. On my bathing ape version that you are seeing right now, uh, the legs come together pretty well and it's not that big of an issue. But on my year of the horse version, uh, it feels like the legs are trying to pop apart on me and I'm not really stoked on that. Uh, the arms also have a couple pegs on them that makes transformation a little bit trickier. Uh, it's still fairly easy, fairly intuitive. Uh, but that is something to be aware of. Definitely check out my video if it's anything that concerns you. You can transform the toy with the gun in the holster. It's probably hard to see, but there is a gun in that holster right there. That works out very well. You can also, when transforming this toy, leave the matrix in. Here you can see the matrix underneath this toy. Did not inhibit the transformation in the least. So as you can see, truck mode, pretty convincing, although a little bit fat in the back, very good from the front. Finally, there is one little gimmick. If we look at the Eva toy here, uh, that is one little gimmick besides the fact that it has rubber wheels and rolls, which is all nice. Uh, you can also pop the front of the toy open. This gimmick will be familiar to you if you have an MP1 toy. Although I would say they've improved on a little bit. So you have your little rider figure that comes with the EVA and uh, normal Optimus Prime releases. You can take that rider and put him in the front seat. And you can get uh, not American with him and put him in the other seat. You can close up the front and then you could see him in there supposedly driving Optimus Prime. All right, let's do a quick comparison of MP1 through 4 and MP10. So, MP1 looks a little bit hideous in truck mode. Um, it's got these weird little recesses. Uh, it doesn't quite come together just right. It's a, a really solid effort for the time, uh, but it's still left a little bit to be desired there. Uh, there is a cool little feature, a couple cool little features. There are shocks. These wheels actually kind of spring up and down. Uh, it's really hard to see, but right in there, there's little springs that come down. And the same deal on the back. That's really neat. Uh, that is not something at all emulated by MP10. MP10, on the other hand, is just a really good looking cab uh, and since it's made out of plastic you can actually pick it up without feeling like you're going to break something right in the waist so uh, definitely the more user-friendly and prettier version of cab mode uh, it's a little fat in the back like I said but still uh, if you had to choose either one of these you would always always pick the one on the right. Now, if we talk about the trailers, this is the MP4 trailer. It has just a little tiny peg in the front that goes into this little hole that flips out from the cab. We just plug it in. It actually fits securely, more securely than you might expect. Uh, there's a, quite a sizable gap here. That lets you swing the toy fairly far around. Uh, but it also probably is too big of a gap. It might look a little strange in one way or another. MP10, on the other hand, has two little pegs that fit into the legs. So as I mentioned earlier, if your legs are prying apart on you, but you have a trailer, that's not a big deal. So getting the trailer on is usually not hard unless you've got lights in front of your face. Connects very well, connects a little bit tighter. Doesn't let you rotate quite as far around, but unless you're doing jackknives, it's not gonna be a problem. So overall, much better looking. Again, the trailer's far superior. The cab is far superior. You just lose the shocks. The seat gimmick is better in this toy. 
than it was on the old MP1 where you could open these and you had kind of what looked like a giant seat right in the middle. So MP10, far superior in truck mode than MP1. The trailers all attach via the exact same mechanism, so definitely feel free to mix and match. If you got a toy in bot mode, go ahead, take that trailer, throw it on whatever toy you have in truck mode. So if you have a 10B, it's in truck mode. Here it is with the trailer from a normal Optimus Prime toy. Uh, you can definitely have your Eva trailer on your Year of the Horse toy, your Year of the Horse trailer on your Eva toy. Uh, mix and match, have fun. I have pictures of just about every combination on anymoon.com, so definitely check out the site. MP10 is an excellent toy and I highly recommend it. It is the most playable Optimus Prime out there, the best looking truck mode. Win, 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 win all over the place. Love it. Now, some people might be like, look, I want an MP1 or an MP10. And they both have very different strengths uh, and very different weaknesses. If you're into die cast, you want a lot of size, you want lots and lots of gimmicks. MP1 has more of that than MP10. If you want something that handles really well uh, and is fun without constant fear of paint flaking off, MP10 just crushes MP1. So have that in mind when you go about shopping. Check out Any Moon, and as always, thanks for watching.